know today is the Sabbath day, right? You know how a woman should dress, right? How's the How should a woman dress? Say it again. Right. She should dress modestly, right? Um, get uh, Sirach. Get your pocket. All oh, praise. Get Sirach. Chapter twenty-six, verse thirteen. Have you ever been married before? You got children? You got one child. Okay. Verse thirteen. Yup. Read that for me. Read what you got. The book of Sirach. Chapter 26 and verse 13. Read verse 14. Verse 14. Let me ask you this first. When, do you want to be married again? Oh, do you want to be married? You don't want to be married at all? At all? You don't want no man? Uh-oh. You say you have a man? That means that you have a boyfriend. All right. You know, God says you can't have boyfriends. You going to continue to have one? Of heaven, sister. I want you to make it. All right. So these are questions that you have to answer. If you truly want the kingdom of heaven, y'all got to stop having sex. All right. You got to make sure that you're not teaching your. You got a son or daughter? Uh oh. How old is she? You got to make sure you're not teaching your daughter to lay up with a man that ain't gonna marry her. That's right. You got to do that. Right. Go ahead. Why don't you want to get married, sister? Uh, stuff don't work out. You got to go through divorce. I ain't got time for all But now this, you have to have some structure. All right. Now you don't just want to marry anybody. The person that you marry needs to be a God-fearing man of the Lord. Okay, understood. Thank you. All right. So, sister, you haven't been married. You don't want to get married, right? You know why you haven't been married or why you don't want to get married? Because you've never seen a man of the Lord that fears God and keeps his commandments. That's right. You ain't seen that before. You don't know what that looks like. All right? All these sisters out here, right, in the, in the right mind would appreciate a man that's God-fearing and willing to keep his commandments. Because you ain't got to worry about him cheating on you. Right. You ain't got to worry about him not going to work. Right, right. Not taking care of his children. Right. Not teaching you those things that you need to know to survive in this place. That's right. Right? You ain't seen that before. Right? You you don't want to marry a nigga. I understand that. All right? I don't want my daughter to marry a nigga. You understand? So that's fine. Right? But don't lay up with one. Don't lay up with one if you're not going to marry him. Right. All right? Don't do that. If there's a chance or a possibility of it not working out, then why you even give him, why you even give it up to him? Right? You can't do that because what's that going to teach your daughter? To be just like her mother. All right? Who you got? The book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 14. A silent and loving woman. So God says that a woman has to be silent. That means not have a big mouth where she's talking all the time, right? Talking over a man, chest bumping, got something to say, she know better, right? It sound like, it sound like, from what I'm hearing, the man that you're dealing with is trying to deal with you the right way. And you telling him, no, I know better than him. No. No, I don't say that. You don't say that, right? But you're controlling the, the, the situation. He says, I want to marry you, sister. I want to take care of you, right? I want to, I want to make sure that if I, something happens to me, the things that I have, they're yours now. Right. Right. That's what he's saying he want to do. You're saying, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to get married to you. Right. I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to. I'm not doing that either. No. You have your reasons. Right. But this is a man trying to guide you the right way. Right. I've never met this man before. Right. I'm assuming that this is a, 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 a good man. All right who is trying to do better for himself and for you, right? He said, I want to marry you, all right? I, I don't want to continue to break God's laws. That's what he's telling you. He said, I want to get married. I want to take care. I don't want to be out here, baby mama, baby. You know, I don't want to be a, a just a, a, a thing, right? I don't want that to be me, right? And But you saying no. Uh-uh, right? Now, you may have your reasons behind that, and I'm not telling you to go marry the brother tomorrow. My point is this. My point is this, a silent woman, a loving woman, is she going to have that type of spirit to her husband or she's going to be willing and submissive to her husband? Which one is she going to be? A silent and loving woman. 
Is she gonna be telling her husband or telling her boyfriend what they gonna do? Or is she gonna be following suit with what her husband says? A silent and loving woman. Which one is she? Following She's gonna be following her husband what she says, right? Come on. That's right. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. So God says, worth great value is a mind, that means a sister's mind, right? That's been instructed. A sister's mind has to be instructed. Who does the instruction come from? A sister's mind. Right here. Who does a sister's, who instructs a sister's mind? The Bible says it has to be instructed. And it's of great value when it is instructed. Who does that? I'm talking to you, sister. No. All right, think about it. You want to say Jesus, right? First Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to show you who instructs it. Hold that, we're going to come back to it. It's all right, you let it go. All right? All right. You say God should be instructing you. What does the Bible say? All right. The Bible says that there's a man that he's going to set over you to instruct you according to God. That's what the Bible says. Read what you got. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. The book of First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So who is instructing the man? Christ, the Lord, right? Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. Who's instructing the woman? The man, right? That's why she was created. All right, that's why the woman was created, was to be instructed by the man. All right, woman means from man, right? She came from his rib. She was created to be his help. All right, she's here because of his existence. That's it. If he didn't, she wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. All right, who needs to instruct her? The man does, right? Read on. And the head of Christ is God. See all of these sisters out here, right? Who needs to instruct them before they get married? A man. Who was that man? No, their father. Their father should be in their lives instructing them before they get married That's to right. teach them what to look for in a man. Right. Otherwise, how will they develop a standard of what they need to, what that man needs to meet in order for them to give him any attention? Otherwise, how would they know? Lest that man instruct them, all right, by his example and teach them. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.